Edgar said to the interviewer he was convinced that the thing out there was in a vault. Yeah, I know what he thought. Dr. Edgar's didn't think it was designed to keep things out. I know what he, he thought. He thought it was designed to keep something in. Do you even understand the difficulty trying to keep a base like Fathom at the bottom of the ocean from killing everyone in it on a daily basis? Oh my god. Everyone hold on to something. I think whatever is on the other side of that door out there, it's not friendly. I think it's trying to get out. That, my friend, is a dire combination. That's a bad sign. Get out of the door! It's spreading like some kind of technological contagion. We can either stop it here or watch the world burn. Fathom, the first season of Derelict. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Or learn more at derelictpodcast.com. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Buntwine, erstwhile monk-turned-traveling medical investigator. Join me as I study the secrets of the divine plagues and uncover the blasphemous truth that ours is not a loving God and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Buntwine, wherever podcasts are available. The Eleventh Hour presents In the House of the Dead, starring in alphabetical order Austin Beach, Matthew Boudreaux, Sarah Golding, Dane Leonardson, Pete Lutz, Owen McEwen, Tanya Maloyevic, and Ebony Rose. wants another glass. Fill me up, babe. How about you, Lauren? The storm is getting worse. The party's over here, honey. Why don't you come join us? We're out. Let me see if one of these hicks can fetch us another bottle. The bus just pulled in. Good. Then we can get out of this shithole. Hey, bartender, can we get another bottle of red back here? If it's not too much to ask. Morons. You'd think they'd check up on us from time to time. I guess they're not interested in a tip. I don't know about you guys, but I'm beginning to have second thoughts about this whole haunted bed and breakfast thing. So far, the only encounter we've had with the undead is the inbred tavern owner and his cheap booze. We should have gone to Vegas. Give it time, Tyler. We just got here. I'm sure its charm will grow on us. Yeah, like a rash. Or a fungus. Who asked you? Just saying. I, for one, hope this place can deliver on its promise of a real supernatural experience. I've been on a ton of haunted tours, and they always turn out to be faked. Everything I've read claims that the House of the Dead is a 100% haunt. Sure. Claims is the key word. It's about time! Who are you? My name is Carson Wright. I represent the establishment owned and operated by Mr. and Mrs. Parks. Are you aware, Mr. Wright... Now we've been stuck in this dump for hours. I apologize for the inconvenience, but unfortunately the parks require completion of all legal documents off-site. For what reason? To give potential guests the opportunity to back out. Once you've entered the House of the Dead, you will not be able to leave until the completion of your stay. That sounds like unlawful imprisonment to me. Not at all. It's a matter of transportation. I will not be returning till after the weekend with the bus. You could hike 20 miles through the woods, but we cannot be held accountable for what may happen to you in the wild. (laughs) Convenient. I have forms for each of you to sign. These contracts absolve Mr. and Mrs. Parks from any legal responsibility for any injuries you may incur during your stay at the resort. That you knowingly, with clear mental faculties, enter the house fully aware of the dangers that you will encounter that could lead to physical harm or even death. Scary. I'm not going to sign that. Don't worry, Lauren. 
They're just fake documents to help build the atmosphere. Nice touch, though. I assure you, Mr. Williams, that these are real documents, as is the danger that awaits you. If you thought this is just a mere bed and breakfast, or some silly haunted house at a theme park, I'm here to tell you. Get back in your cars and go home. This house of the dead is inhabited with dark poltergeists. Poltergeists are not your run-of-the-mill ghosts. They can interact with the living. That means they can physically harm you. After your stay in the House of the Dead, you will never be the same. If you make it out alive, that is. Bravo! You sold me! Where do we sign? I'm not sure if this is for me. Don't worry, Lauren. I'll protect you. I don't even know you. We can remedy that. Alec, just leave her alone. Do what you want, honey. The choice is yours. If you wish to continue with your House of the Dead Haunted Adventure Incorporated, please sign these. Tyler and Rose Watkins. Alexander Williams. And Lauren McPherson. I hope they have better wine at the mansion. If not, we'll be asking for a refund. Very good. Now please hand over all phones and communication devices. I don't see why we should. You should be well versed in our policy concerning electronic devices by now, Miss Watkins. The brochure said that electronic devices like cell phones can provoke the spirits. So I guess that's why. Provoke? Wait till you see me without mine. Please power down your devices and hand them to me. They will be kept in a safe on site. What if something happens? This is why we provided you a contact number for family and friends, so they can reach you in case of an emergency. Your phones will be returned in such an instance. So now what? Well, everything appears to be in order. If everyone will follow me, we can begin our trip to the House of the Dead. Oh, how much longer? I have to pee. Yeah, and my back is killing me. The house is still a ways up the road, but I can't take the bus much further. The road becomes impassable for a large vehicle. I'm not walking in the rain. Of course not. Is that a horse and carriage? From here, you will be taken by coach for the remainder of the journey. So much for my makeup. This is your last chance to back out. You may return with me. I will tear up the contract and return your phone. No questions asked. Are you kidding me? I've always wanted to ride in a carriage driven by Dracula's henchmen. We're ready to go. And you, Miss McPherson? I know this is a bad decision, but... I need to get over my fears. That's my girl. I'm not your girl. Your luggage was taken up earlier today and placed in your rooms. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Let's go. Did you see the driver? He was wearing a hood? Of course he was. It's raining out. Well, we're in the shit now. Oh, sorry, Lauren. I'm just kidding. No, you're right. We are. Back in the bus, you said you had to get over your fears. What was that all about? I've spent most of my adult life taking care of my sick mother. I haven't spent much time outside of that environment. A big day was a trip to the supermarket. I needed something to test myself. And you thought a haunted bed and breakfast was the way to go? The simplest interactions terrify me. This... this trip was an attempt to get over my fears. And what is more terrifying than a haunted house, right? If I can overcome this, then everything else will be a piece of cake. Stick with me, honey, and we'll get you through this together. Thank you, Rose. You're so sweet. You can count on me. Why don't you see if you can ride with the driver? Fine, I'll be quiet. I'm soaked to the bone. I can see that. It's a good look. Watch it, douche. You're talking to my wife. I love when you defend me, babe. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for the long trip, but the carriage ride is the only way to reach the mansion, and the storm is an extra touch we have no control over. 
I am Andre Parks, and this is my wife, Isabella. Your luggage has been taken to your rooms and your clothes unpacked. There you can get changed into something dry for dinner. Oh, thank God. I'm starving. We have a succulent feast of locally caught game and an assortment of desserts just to die for. I caught the trout myself. Well, as long as you have wine, I'm good. We have an excellent selection from our cellar. Maybe this won't be so bad after all. Um, where's everyone else? We had a large group cancellation. With all the lightning storms, the airport is temporarily shut down. It's always a problem this time of year. You four will have the mansion all to yourselves this weekend. Great. There goes my chance to get freaky with some hot ghost hunting ladies. No need to worry, Mr. Williams. There are plenty of freaks within these walls. Let us show you to your rooms, shall we? This is your room, Alexander. Please, call me Alec. Alec. Oh my god, what the hell is this? The rooms have been chosen specifically for each guest using the questionnaire you filled out on your application. The place looks like a sex dungeon. That's because it is. The room is an exact replication of the initiation room for the cult of Nexus. Wow. I read about them. Didn't they light themselves on fire or some such craziness? Yes, they believed their ashes would be transported to the next plane of ascension. Nuts. What's with the chains and restraints hanging everywhere? The cult recruited members into the collective through kidnapping, human trafficking, and drug abuse. They would condition the lost souls they found wandering the streets and turned them into subservient slaves. You seem to be well versed in this Nexus cult. As I said, there are many freaks within these walls, and not all of them of the Supernatural kind. Dinner will be in 30 minutes. Your clothes have been placed in the dresser over there. The bathroom is around the corner. Thank you, Mr. Parks. Lauren, are you all right? I need to sit down. I feel sick. Can I get you something? Uh, A drink of water? What happened in this room? As with all the rooms in the house, it was constructed with elements from, how should I say, notorious locations. What location? The walls were built using wood and bricks from H.H. Holmes' murder castle. The serial killer? The very one. Is there another room I can stay in? You have been matched with the room. From your questionnaire. But... Dinner will be served downstairs in 30 minutes. I'm sure once you've eaten, you'll feel better. Mr. Parks was right. This wine is fantastic. What was with the freak's comment his wife made? That was odd, don't you think? I don't know. Maybe they're swingers. As long as the wine doesn't run out, I don't give two shits. Speak of the devils. Mr. and Mrs. Watkins, unfortunately, with the current weather, we will not be able to get you to your cabin tonight. If the storm passes by morning, I'll take you after breakfast. Is your room satisfactory? It's fine. Not as good as this Merlot, but it's fine. That particular vintage was bottled by my father more than 40 years ago. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Ring, if you require anything else. We must check on dinner preparations. We shall see you in the dining room. Do you think they're the actual owners? No way. Did you see their clothes? Definitely came from a theatrical production of some Edgar Allan Poe story. No doubt about it. They're actors. What do you think of our guest? The couple could be a problem, especially if the storm continues. The rain should stop by morning. Once they're at the cabin, they won't be our concern any longer. And a girl, Lauren. A ball of nerves. I'd be surprised if she makes it through the night. What about Alec? You saw the way he looked at me. 
They'll be under my spell in no time. When you take the Watkins to the cabin in the morning, I'll tell him I need to be alone with him, and he should make up some excuse to stay behind. And then? Then I will show him what he came here to see. Excellent. To dinner? Yes, my love. This lamb amistad may be the best thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. It is the speciality of the house. Well, I'd kill for it. I'm sure you would. The house is much larger than I thought. We got lost trying to find the dining room. The house has more than 150 rooms, and even I haven't been in all of them. Mr. Parks, can you tell us some history of the house? Well, of course. It would be my pleasure. Initial construction began in 1893 by Reginald Howe, a self-made railroad tycoon. The house was to be his vacation home, but the construction was plagued with a number of odd accidents. Five men were killed in the early stages of the building, an unexplained explosion. Howe himself died of a heart attack the first night he slept in the finished home. Ownership changed hands many times throughout the years until Andre's father purchased the house. A devoted spiritualist, he began to expand the property. My father was fascinated with the supernatural. He added room after room, using materials taken from other houses that had haunted reputations or from infamous locations of terrible crimes. Why? To speak with the dead. Yes. He believed these places were imprinted with supernatural energies, energy that could be transplanted here. It was his experiment for contacting the other side. You see, my mother died when I was an infant, and my father became obsessed with finding a way to speak with her one last time. Was he successful? Sadly, no. The mansion has planks from Hill House, bricks from H.H. H. Holmes' murder castle, doors from the Winchester estate, windows from the Amityville House. Even the cabin Tyler and Rose will be staying in is constructed of wood from the forests around Massachusetts, the location famous for the Salem Witch Trials. I can hear voices. It's not safe here. No, my dear, it is not. But that is what you all paid for, the opportunity to meet an actual ghost, is it not? We employ no actors and use no state-of-the-art special effects. No, what you will experience here is real. <laughs> Shh, listen. The house is filled with spirits, and once they sense the living... They can become irritable. If everyone would follow me to the sitting room, we will have after-dinner drinks, and that's dessert, I promise. I think I'm just going to go to bed. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Have a good night's sleep, Lauren, and we will see you in the morning. Everyone else, come with us. Alec, can I speak with you? Sure. Tomorrow morning, after breakfast, my husband will be giving a tour of the estate grounds and taking the Watkins to their cabin in the woods. They will be out for most of the day. When the time comes, tell him you're, you're not feeling well and, and you're going back to bed. Why? Are you not attracted to me? Very much, Miss Parks. Uh, I Isabella? Then... We have an understanding. I don't know what to say. What about your husband? Oh, there is no need to worry about Mr. Parks. After the group has left in the morning, wait for me in your room. Till then. Good night. Then you will see what the cult of Nexus truly has to offer. I 
should never have come here. Why would anyone want to be my friend? Mother was right. Just go to sleep. Start over in the morning. Maybe I'll hang out with Alec. I think he likes me. Murderer. Hello? Is somebody there? No, I'm hearing things. Go to sleep, Lauren. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to take. You have no soul to take. <gasps> That's enough! Who's there? Just a fellow murderer who wants to be your friend. <laughs> Not a murderer. Well, that's not what your mother said to me. Stop it! She hates you for what you did to her. They beat her when she walked in her sleep. When that didn't work, they tied her to the bed for days on end with no food. Cruel, even by my standards. At least I gassed my victims. Much less suffering. Just shut up! You're a monster. Just like me. <laughs> no! I'm sorry, Mama. <laughs> what happened? Are you all right? A, a, a man was in the room. It's okay, honey. I don't see anyone. I'll bring up some tea. Thank you. What did he look like? I... I didn't see him. I, I could hear his voice and I felt his breath on my face. It was horrible. <laughs> I'm going to take a look around. I'll stay with Lauren. I'll get Alec. If anyone is in the house, we'll find them. What did he say to you? He said, my mother hates me. He said I have no soul. More coffee, babe? Yes, please. Now that the storm has passed, I see just how beautiful this place is. What did you and Lauren talk about last night? She didn't say a whole lot. She was terrified. We looked everywhere, but I couldn't find anyone. The place is huge, though. There's an unlimited amount of places to hide. Not that any of that matters. How so? It's just a setup. What do you mean? It was just an actor in the room with her. Or more likely a hidden speaker. Now that I think of it, that's pretty messed up. We did talk about her mother. What about her? She had been taking care of her mother for years. She put her whole life on hold. Her mom's mind started to go, so she had to put her in a home for people with dementia. Shortly after that, her mom died, and Lauren hasn't gotten over it yet. She blames herself. Oh, poor girl. No wonder she's so closed off. You're awfully quiet over there. I'm not feeling great this morning. I think I had too much wine yesterday. I'm going to stay in this morning. You guys go on without me. You can't. We're going to tour the grounds, and then Andre's taking us to the cabin. Should be a beautiful trip. Just look at all that sun. That's the problem. My head is pounding. You guys have fun. I think I'm going to go take a nap. Feel better. <laughs> Lightweight. Is everyone doing okay back there? Yup. Just like the haunted hay rides I took as a kid. How about a roll in the hay, sexy young woman? We're not alone, Doofus. Oh, Lauren can join in. You wish. Yes, I do. Feeling better this morning, Lauren? Much better, thank you. I just love the outdoors. There's trees as far as the eye can see. The house is situated in the middle of 20,000 acres of dense forest. It's as remote as one can get in these modern times. Has no one else ever lived here? Before the house was built, yes. Around 1810, a trapper named Charles Davis hunted these lands for food and pelts. He had a good trade until a small clan of religious refugees took up residence. The resources a village needs to survive put a substantial strain on the ecosystem. Game became scarce, and Charles found that most of his traps were empty. 
He demanded that the villagers move to other parts. He warned them that this was his land. He was here first, and they'd better move on or else. Let me guess. They didn't leave, did they? No, they did not. One night, Charles Davis crept into the house of Jedediah Tomlinson, the leader of the village, and slit the throats of his entire family from ear to ear. Those poor people. It gets worse. It always does. The word spread to the surrounding towns that something evil was happening in the woods, so the men formed a search party and headed into the forest. What they found shook them to their core. Stacked in storage houses were piles of human body parts in various stages of preparation for the smokehouse. He turned them into beef jerky? Yes. When the villagers finally captured Charles Davis, they strung up a noose over that tree, right over there. But before they executed him, he cursed the land and all who would try to take it from him. That must have been hell on property value. We're almost to the cabin. Good. I don't like these woods. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to the house. I hope Alec is feeling better. I'm thinking about asking him to dinner. Normally, I tell you to steer clear, sister. But since he's the only available man on this trip, I say, <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were coming. I had some chores to attend to first. So, should we get in bed? Well, that's a good idea. Okay. Are you going to join me? In a moment. What are you doing? I told you there were freaks inside these walls. Restraints. I like to play rough. I hope that's all right with you. Yes, but I'm warning you. I can get feisty myself. I read your application. We did our research. I know all your dirty little secrets, Alec. Now, lay down. Like this? Mm-hmm. My ankles, too? I don't want you running off on me. I'm going to tell you a story. You have my attention. I didn't tell you the whole story behind this room. It's much, much more than just a, a reproduction of the Nexus's ritual chamber. These walls were taken from the Blackstone Sanitarium before it was torn down. Why would you do that? Well, because of one very special patient, Sarah Jones. She, she was treated within these walls after her experiences with the cult of Nexus. Sarah was taken into the family at a very low point in her life. She had a, a long and losing battle with drugs and alcohol, and, well, that made her the perfect mark for the cult of Nexus. As with all new members, she was ritualistically beaten and abused by the followers of Nexus. She was conditioned to accept this behavior as normal. It destroyed her innocence and raised her sense of morality. What happened to her? After a year of what they called training, which was nothing more than rape and torture, Sarah was brought into the family as an equal, ready for the next level of ascension. What are, you, what are you doing with that? But before taking her place in the cult, every disciple of the Nexus had to prove their unwavering devotion to the God of the Void, the symbol of the Nexus. A cross within a pyramid was to be branded into her flesh. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, just just wait a minute. Don't you have to play with me, Alec? Uh, I... Don't you? Yes. Good. Ah! 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 Very, very good. Now, we can begin. Tyler, get over here. You have to see this. Wow. A hot tub? Indeed it is. You can't possibly have power out here, can you? 
top of the line generator. She's out behind the cabin. I'll start it up before we leave. This place is incredible. In the cabin, there is a fully stocked icebox. Cheese, sandwiches, and a dozen bottles of your favorite red. Compliments of the house. May you live forever. You're too kind. Hey, Lauren, let's go check out the cabin. Okay. Sure. Okay, this? This is fantastic. I have something very important to tell you. What's that? You must be careful out here. The spirit of Charles Davis still roams these woods, searching for those who would steal his land. Once the sun goes down, please remain in the cabin till sunrise for your own safety. Come on, man. It's just the two of us. You can drop the act. Act? I get it. You have to put on a show. I'm impressed. You'll get a five-star review from us. No worries. Of course. Sometimes I get carried away. And I was going to warn you about the Spectre Woodsman and his bloody cursed axe. Silly me. (laughs) Sounds like a chilling tale. Oh, it is. Hey, good talk. But I need to check on the wife before she drinks all the wine. Thanks for everything, Andre. (laughs) My pleasure. Mr. Parks, I have to thank you. For what, my dear? I've known nothing but isolation and depression. My mother and I were locked away in that stuffy apartment way too long. Coming here and meeting new people has made me see for the first time that there's so much more to life, more than the pain and regret that I have bottled up inside me always on the edge of boiling over, always blaming myself for my mother's death. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You are most welcome, but you did kill your mother. What? Please correct me if I'm wrong, but you placed a pillow over her face until she stopped breathing. How? You were screened and, I have to admit, followed. But we have to be sure all our applicants are a perfect match. We wouldn't want to sacrifice innocent people to the house. That would be terrible. You can't possibly know that. You can't... We're very resourceful, aren't we, Isabella? Did everything go to plan? Better than expected. Mr. Watkins doesn't believe in ghosts. The woodsman will make quick work of them. And what of your young beau? Oh, he's all tied up at the moment. It's a shame, really. What? This one here. What about her? She's not really a bad person. She just made an unfortunate decision. We all have to be held accountable for our actions. Truer words were never spoken. Come on, help me move her upstairs. We'll put her in the capable hands of Mr. H. H. Holmes. This is the life. Just imagine this place in winter. I'd love to spend the holidays here. Yeah. You know, this place could be our next project. Really? Think about it. We could bulldoze all these trees for cross-country skiing trails. Clear that whole area over there for a ski lodge. And have the main street lined with high-end shops for people with deep pockets. Maybe a swanky nightclub with cage dancers. I like the sound of that. You think we can do it? Of course. How many times have we tricked dimwits out of their land and life savings? Money talks, and these two saps, Andre and Isabella, I don't think they're the brightest crayons in the box. A haunted bed and breakfast? Come on. (laughs) That's just a waste of prime real estate. Tyler, look at that sunset. Why don't we watch it from the hot tub? Good idea. I'll make us a plate of cheese and crackers. I'll go turn on the jets. You like whole grain crackers or clubs? Just bring both and hurry up. Get your clothes off. The sun's almost down. I love when you talk dirty. Wow, that's perfect. 
Honey, is that you? Rose? Who the hell are you? Look, man, I appreciate what you're doing, but I already told your boss it's not necessary, so you can take your silly woodsman costume and your rubber axe somewhere else. When the hell is she coming back? My hip is burning. This thing better not get infected. It's about time. It's my turn to tie you up. M Mr. Parks? Hi. Good evening, Mr. Williams. You seem to be in an awkward position. Oh, I I'm cool. Just relaxing. I see. Ah. Right where I left you. Wait a minute, Andre. Buddy, this wasn't my idea. She put me up to this. I think she spiked my drink. Y yeah, she roofied me. Now, now, you've had your fun. It's time to face the music, as they say. Look, it's not my fault. It was all her idea. She's crazy. I don't appreciate you slandering my wife's good name. I, I Shut your mouth. Thank you. Now we can start. Isabella? Yes, my love. What is she doing? She is summoning the spirit of Sarah Jones. She, you people are nuts. This isn't real. You see, Anik, there is an untold truth behind the story of the Nexus cult. They didn't kill themselves in a ritualistic mass suicide. Oh my god, it's... It's her. After years of sadistic abuse, Sarah Jones snapped. She wanted revenge. She needed revenge. Sarah's damaged mind concocted a plan. She would place a powerful tranquilizer in the communal wine. Once it was ingested, the entire cult lay helpless on the floor. Sarah took a carving knife and with the skill of a surgeon disemboweled each and every one of them. When she had finished the terrible deed, she set the bodies ablaze and waited for the authorities to arrive. No. God, this can't be happening. Once Sarah is called, she cannot be satiated until blood is spilled. Look upon the bed. He bears the mark of Nexus. He demands your vengeance. Why are you doing this to me? You did this to yourself, Alec. We chose you for a reason. For what you did to all those helpless women. I haven't done anything. You're as guilty as the cult of Nexus. We know your secret. We know you're the Night Strangler. No. Oh. Ten innocent women killed by a madman in the park. And poor Lauren was to be your next victim. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come, Isabella, let us leave Miss Jones to her work. Yes, my love.
Is it night? I can't see anything. I can't see anything. I'm in a coffin. Of course you're not in a coffin. Who's there? Your friend, Henry. (sighs) No. No, get out of my head. The house is quiet. The spirits are appeased. For now. Andre, must you be so pessimistic? I'm sorry, my sweet, but you know it's just a temporary state. I know. When is the next group scheduled to arrive? Not until next week. Mr. Wright must cover the tracks of our current guests before planning the next party. I have an idea. Why don't we go for a carriage ride in the country tomorrow, then perhaps a romantic night at the cabin? After we clean up what's left of the Watkins, of course. Of course. I believe we do deserve a little vacation. My dear wife, that sounds like a marvelous idea. <laughs> In the House of the Dead was written and produced by Neil Gustin of Twilight Audio Theater. 63 audio direction by Pete Lutz. Additional sound recording by Tanya Malevich. Music was by Dane Russell Leonardson and Kevin McLeod. 
The cast was Austin Beach of Broken Bard Studios as Alec, Matthew Boudreaux of Oral Stage Studios as Tyler, Sarah Golding of Quirky Voices as Isabella, Dane Leonardson of Coach Studios as Carson Wright, Pete Lutz of 63 Audio as Andre, Owen McEwen of Rolling Rehearsal Studios as H.H. Holmes, Tanya Maloyevich of Lightning Bolt Theater as Lauren, and Ebony Rose of the Narada Radio Company as Rose. This has been a presentation for the 11th Hour, copyright 2018. Talmor is my home. My family have worked the land for generations. My grand says the island does not belong to us, but we belong to the island. And we must be ready for a great evil is coming. And death follows with it. Listen and subscribe to the latest season of Undertow, The Harrowing, a story glass production presented by Realm, available wherever you get your podcasts. If you want a person dead, you call a hitman. If you want a monster dead, you call Lincoln Franks. But you better be able to pay the price he asks because Lincoln doesn't work for free. Pay to slay, bitches. Slay Season 2 is the current season of Scott Sigler Slices, a fiction podcast with dark tales hacked from the mind of a number one New York Times bestselling author. Slay is a foul-mouthed, monster-killing, drug-addled anti-hero story that's John Wick meets Buffy meets Breaking Bad. Slay Season 1 is complete and waiting for you in the feed, as is Scott's short story anthology, Blood is Red. Scott Sigler Slices is the world's longest-running fiction podcast, 19 years and counting, with new episodes dropping every Sunday. Get Scott Sigler Slices on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.